Hey everyone, welcome back to Ender Arctic. If you are new to this channel, then my name is Sivang Parma and I'm a software engineer at Hashtin by Devlight. On this channel, we provide Android development tutorial in Kotlin in Java. So without any further delay, let's get started with today's video. In today's video, we will be developing a ChatGPT Android app and I assume that you are familiar with ChatGPT which is a AI bot released by OpenAI. However, sometimes it becomes unavailable due to heavy traffic. Therefore, we are looking to create our own Android app that can be easily achieved with the help of OpenAI. So let's create a new project in Android Studio and we will just give it a name and starting with an empty activity. So yeah, so this is a chat GPT app and choosing the language as Kotlin. Let's wait for the process to finish. As you can see, the Gradle build is under progress. So yeah, Gradle build has been finished. So we are ready to go. So first of all, we will just creating a simple design for our app. So for this, we have just opened our activity main.xml file, adding a simple edit text. Giving it our ID with ET question, which will be required us to connect in the main activity.kt file. Providing a hint to enter your question here or something like that. Now we have just added a button. Give giving it ID as well. Marking it as submit. And at last, we are just using a text view to show our response that we'll be getting from API. Yeah, so response will appear here. So this is the basic design that I have done. Yeah, I know I'm not good at design, but we are going to more focus on main activity.kt file, which is the backend of our application. So we can just provide some margin or padding around it and one can easily decorate it by just adding colors in it. So now we are in the main activity.kt file which is the important part of our application. We will just doing all coding and the backend stuff. First of all, we will be just initializing all the elements that we have declared in the activity main.xml file. So this is quite easy and it can be done with the find vy id function. So yeah, it is showing some error, but if we will just refresh it, error is gone. After getting all the instance of the element which we are required, we will just using on click listener on the button because whenever a person clicks on the button, we have to call our API call function. But first of all, we will be just using a toast message to just show the question that has been entered by the user. So let's get the string data from the question. Yeah, we will be using inside the function because it will be changing frequently. So after running the application in the emulator, yeah, we are just getting a toast message. So we are good to go. So we will just be creating another function, get response where we will just doing all the API call 
which is required for our application so parameter it will be just accepting a question which of, of a string type and now we can just call this function inside submit button sending and getting response from the api there are some mechanism and some popular libraries are poly and okhttt but today we will just going with the okhttp so one can just simply search for okhttp and this is the full documentation so first of all we will be just adding this dependency in build.gradle.file so we'll just copy it go to build gradle app and click on the sync now so it will be just adding that okhttp dependency apart from that as we are just using api call so we also required the permission of the internet so we can just go to the android manifest file and we can just ask for the internet permission so in this way we are just connecting our app with the internet uh, i think gradle build has been finished so we can just go back to the okhttp We can simply go to the documentation to find the relevant code and we have to just import it. So yeah, so for getting a URL and API key, we have to just go to the OpenAI API. So simply search chat GPT API and get started. So if you don't have a account so you can just simply create one and if you are already having so just log into our account and the top right corner click on the road and see view api keys so in this way you can just create an api key and there is some usage limit the free account will be just getting around 18 dollar so this is the api reference we'll just go into the models where we will just getting all the required details how to use this api so this is the particular url so we'll just save it in our function yeah so after saving the api key and the url we can call this function and in the function we are required a response so we will just using a lambda function to get the response and i will be attaching that response to that t response which is a text view so we can just simply this by txt response dot text equals to the response we are getting from this function. We have to just modify our function also in order to just provide the function response. So we'll be just using a callback, which will be also a type of a string, which will be our eventually response. So these are the parameter we have to just send in the JSON format. So so we'll be just creating a request body in which we will be initializing all the JSON parameter which are model, prompt, max, tokens and these things. For the model we are just letting it text double C 003 and in the prompt we will be just pass the question that we are receiving. Now coming to the OK HTTP. So this is your sample request that how this works. So we'll just copy it and paste it in our. So we can just simply import the libraries. So in the URL, we will just pass in the URL of the OpenAI. And in the headers, we have to pass some headers like content type and authorization. So we will just also adding them content type application.json and uh, authorization we have to just type bearer and our open ai api key yeah so we have just created a request now we have to just send the request with the help of the post function and the post we are just sending the request body 
which is in the JSON format. So we have to just convert it into required function. As we are just running on the on the UI thread, so we'll be just using the NQ function. And uh, there are some parameters on failure or, or or on response. So we will simply adding this function, and it will just simply ask to implement its member. So these are the members on failure and on response. So if the API call fails, so we will just using our log. So we can just simply see in the locket that what's the error. So we are just marking it with the tag error and the message API fail and the actual reason for the API fail. And if the API call is successful, so we will just getting a particular response and we will just storing this response in the string. So response.body.string and sometime body can be null too so we have to just assign with a null safety so before passing it in our text view we will just check it once while printing in the locket with a tag data and it can be null too so we have to just assign with the if else body yeah so there is a bracket missing so we can just simply add it and we can also add a else block so it's time to test our app click on the green play button and let's wait for the installation let's type a simple message how are you and let's see what we get in the response yeah so we are getting an error message let's see what's the error message we are getting we could not pass the JSON body. So yeah, so there is an issue with the JSON body. Let's see. So we can just go to the request body and see after the temperature zero, there was a comma, but that was the last parameter. So after removing, let's simply ask the same question again. How are you? Yeah, so just go to the log cat and see this time we are getting a JSON response. And if we just scroll down to the text, so yeah, it's saying I'm doing well. Thank you. How about you? So yeah, so we are just getting a response. So we can just simply pass the response to our main function. So it will be just showing it in the txt response. So for that, we will be just using a JSON object of the body. And after that, we will just creating a JSON array of choices. As we can see in the response, there is a choices, which is a JSON array where we are just getting our answer in the text parameter. And after that, we can just use the build text to get that string of text. And in the end, we will just using a callback function to pass that text. So yeah, now we have just completed all of things thing. So let's run our application again. And we are going with the same question. How are you? And when we are just click on the submit. Yeah. So now we are just getting a response. I am doing well. Thank you. How about you? So let's continue the conversation. I am doing well. So let's ask for some coding question write Kotlin program to swap values when I just clicked on the submit yeah so we are just getting a whole program in Kotlin so yeah, it's working fine let's try with another one what is chat GPT so yeah it's going all response that's all for today's tutorial. I hope you learned something new. If you have any question, leave them in the comment below and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.